All right, so we want to solve this or verify this trig identity. So the first thing I do is I take that and I write it at the bottom because one of the things to do is to make sure that you're organizing this correctly and you're showing your work correctly. That's one of the problems that a lot of people have when they do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just work straight down this equal sign right here and I'm going to keep just going changing what I have here until it eventually gets to here. Yeah, that's how I verify that this equals this. And I'm going to do it by using different trig properties and or trig identities that are that we already know. And one of the most popular ones is that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, we that's called the Pythagorean. Pythagorean identity. In fact, let me just prove that to you right here real quick. Sine squared plus cosine squared. Here's my unit circle, right? And that's a right angle right there. This distance right here, it's a unit circle, so that distance is always what? That radius for that circle is always what? It's always one. So that distance is one. This distance is the adjacent, right? It's the adjacent one, which was your x coordinate. And this distance was your opposite, which is the y coordinate. So x squared plus y squared, this is just a right triangle, right? x squared plus y squared, or cosine squared plus sine squared equals one squared, which is one. Mm -hmm. So there's the perp, there, there's kind of the proof about that formula. Now some of the other formula, this is more than one formula though, if I divide this by cosine squared, I'll get a new equation. What's sine over cosine? Mm -hmm. I get tangent squared plus what's cosine divided by cosine? Cosine squared divided by cosine squared. One. And what's one over cosine? Cosecant. One over cosine is secant, secant, secant squared. So tangent squared plus one equals secant squared. Look, look familiar? Yeah. That's one of those other formulas you had. If you divide everything by, by sine squared instead of cosine squared, you'll get one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. And then you can, of course, move these things around if you want. You can subtract one. So tangent squared equals secant squared minus one, etc. So there's actually a lot of formulas you have for that. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is recognize, oh, look, I want cosine squared in my answer. So which of these two do I want to change? Uh, what sign? I want to change the sine one. And so what does that, what does the sine equal? If I move this to the other side, sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. So let's write, let's write this as 1 minus cosine squared of x. Do you see what I changed there? Minus cosine squared of x. I did a little color coding so you can see what yeah. I substituted. I substituted 1 minus cosine squared for sine squared. Okay, so you got it? Now what does that equal? What can I do with the cosine squared? What's negative cosine squared minus cosine squared? Zero. Mm -mm, because I have a negative. What's negative? Uh, negative two cosine squared. Exactly. Square. It's negative two. So what do I have? I have one minus two cosine squared x. Hey, look at that. That's my answer. So actually, I didn't need all this extra space. That was a simple two-step problem. Sure. If I found the first step quickly and easily. Let's try another one. So this problem is a little bit different. So again, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna write it at the bottom in case I need a lot of space. And I'm gonna erase it from there. All right, and now I'm gonna start to one by one change this side until it equals this side. So the first step, um, that I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize that cosecant is 1 over sine. So I'm going to write cosecant as 1 over sine x every time I see cosecant. And I'm going to write everything else just the same as it was. So notice the red didn't change, right? So far, so good? Yeah. 
Now, you might ask, well, how did I know to do that first? Well, this is just the more you do, the better you get at it. It's like you recognize, hey, one of the strategies is to always write things in terms of sine and cosine. It doesn't always work, but it's a good place to start. And when you do that, you can recognize, hopefully, do you see what's going to happen right here? Yeah, because we're going to... See, this is, this is sine over 1, and this yeah. is 1 over sine, so the sines are going to cancel here. Okay? Now, okay. I'm not going to write it like that, because that's not actually how you should do it. Here's how I'm going to write it. My next line, I'm going to actually just write the simplified form of this. Okay? So my next line, in fact, I recognize right, right, right away that, look at my answer down here. Yeah. The bottom is actually just going to cancel the 1. And which means what, which means I can turn this one over sine back into cosecant x. I actually didn't need that to be one over sine, because my answer is cosecant x. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Minus the sine of x. Now, if you want to write over one, you can. You really don't even need to do that, but I'm going to do that extra step just so you can see. And what does that equal? cosecant x minus sine of x, which is my answer. So again, I didn't need that extra space. So there's a couple examples for you. Let's try one more. So let's try this one. This one looks a little bit trickier, and it is a bit trickier. Now, what a lot of people do on this one, they, what they do wrong is they start trying to cancel out those things. Can't do that. This just doesn't work. The reason, the only time you can cancel something out is when it is a factor of the entire numerator and the entire denominator. Okay, that's the only time you can cancel things out. That is not the case here. So don't make that mistake. Mm -hmm. But what you can do. That's also only with multiplication, right? It's only when you're multiplying things and the entire top and the entire bottom. Mm -hmm. If you ever wonder if you can do something like that, just write a simpler equation like two squared minus three squared all over two minus three and see if that works see if canceling that out, see if that just equals negative one and you'll see that it doesn't work. So just do a simple example to the side with numbers to, to kind of check your understanding to be like, is that legal? Can I do that? Sometimes you have to do that. It's mm -hmm. just not legal. It doesn't even really make sense to do something like that if you do that. All right, so first of all, let's do what we always talk about. Let's write this down at the bottom. So this is going to equal sine x. Was it minus cosine x? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, this is where it gets into a little bit of like, do you remember factoring? Because if you remember factoring, this is a piece of cake. Do you remember this rule, a squared minus b squared? Mm -hmm. Equals c squared. Equals c squared. Nope. Equals. That's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, and that's the Pythagorean's theorem. This is, no. do you remember how yeah. to factor a difference of perfect squares? Yeah, isn't it going to be a parentheses and then parentheses and then it's going to be an A minus B? A plus B, A minus B. Remember that trick? Yeah. Algebra 1, mm -hmm. that's this. You have to remember that. That's And that's what I have here. Do you see how I have A, a is like my sine mm -hmm. and B is like my cosine? So that's what we're going to do the top of the fraction? That's exactly what we're going to do. So how does this top factor? How will that factor? top part factor. It'll turn into sine x plus cosine x. It's going to be sine x plus cosine x and times sine x minus cosine x. Sine x minus cosine x. Do y'all see how that works? Yeah. All right. And then what's on the bottom? Sine x plus cosine x. Yeah. Now, here's the big question. Now, am I allowed to cancel something out? Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, now I can cancel out because this, do you see how that's being multiplied? Mm -hmm. This and this are the same thing. So that's a factor. This is kind of like one times that, mm -hmm. right? So that now I can cancel out that entire thing because it's a factor of the entire numerator and a factor of the entire denominator. And when I cancel it out, what do I get? Uh, sine x minus cosine x. Oh my gosh, it wasn't that hard. Turns out that it was actually a two-step problem again. The reason it looked hard is because, well, I didn't know what to do at the start. Now, what some people might have done at the start is they might have tried to use one of those Pythagorean identities. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Maybe it would have worked, but it would have taken a lot longer to get there. Like converting something into like 1 minus cosine squared or something like that. Maybe that would have worked. It's also hard because there's a subtraction on the top instead of addition. 
right on the top yeah so anyway identifying what kind of problem you have is kind of the key to these problems okay